All right, morning, guys. So we are going to be looking at elastic strings and springs, which is chapter three in Further Mechanics One. Um, so let's get straight on with it. So Hooke's law is when an elastic string or spring is stretched, the tension T produced is proportional to the extension, which we know as X, and that gives us the equation that T is lambda over L X. More commonly, you might see this written as T equals lambda X divided by L. That's the more common way of writing it, um, but it's a lot easier to remember writing that down, isn't it? Uh, so lambda is known as the modulus elasticity, and the notes here in the L mass, the modulus elasticity refers to the constant lambda in the equation, t equals lambda, L, lambda over Lx. Uh, lambda can be understood as the force needed to double the length of a string or spring, so the new, the uh, for tension, is going to be in Newton, so it's going to the tension is going to be a lambda over L times by L, which is going to give me lambda Newtons. And lambda should not be confused with Young's modulus, um, which uh, you might come across in physics, maybe. Um, the constant Young's modulus does not appear in LMS, but if you come across it in physics, you might know it as elastics modulus. Um, well, it's just a key note there that they are not the same. Um, but yeah. So, let's get on where Hooke's law actually applies here. So many strings and springs slash wires uh, and solids obey Hooke's law. In a limited range, uh, Hooke's law only ever applies up to a maximum force known as the elastic limit. Uh, uh, which varies for each of the spring. Of course, it changes depending on the spring. Uh, on the very large forces, springs can deform and break. And if a string or spring obeys Hooke's law, it is called elastic. An elastic spring can also be compressed, producing thrust instead of tension. Of course, you found that with uh, connected particles when blocks, when the like a, a tow bar was pushing you the other way, you had thrust into instead of tension. Uh, however, elastic springs do not resist compression, so think about how a string would behave. They don't resist it, they can also uh, go under compression as well as being extended. And all springs and strings, and especially in our mass, are light and they do not extend under their own weight. And the graph here in the bottom right is showing the extension of a spring as the weight hung from it, and hence the tension in the spring increases, so the variables are in direct proportion obeying Hooke's law, up to the elastic limit, beyond which the law will not hold. Alright, that's me just reading everything out loud. Um, anyway, let's go on with the question. So we've got an elastic, elastic string of natural length 2 metres, and modulus elasticity 29.4 has one end fixed. A particle of mass 4 kilograms is attached to the other end and hangs at rest to find the extension of the string. Right. So, we have a little equation that we need to remember that t is equal to lambda x divided by l, which is Hooke's law. Uh, so, we draw a diagram out. We've got the ball, we've got the tension going outwards, and we've got the weight of this thing, which is going to be 4g. So, we know the tension is equal to 4g. So, we can use that lambda x divided by l is going to be equal to 4g. Uh, so, we've got 29.4. 4x over 2 equals 4g, uh, so x is going to be what, 8g divided by 29.4, what's that going to give you on your calculator? Of course we're taking g is 9.8 here, so uh, let me just grab the old calculator. So on the calculator we're going to do 8 times 9.8, I want to divide that by 29.4, uh, that gives you, ooh, nice value. Hope you got a nice value two there. Uh, that you should have got eight thirds. Um, meters. I got a nice value. Hopefully you did as well. Make sure you double check my working because you never know. However, in mechanics we don't like fractions, so it's probably worth rounding it to two point six seven meters. That's the extension. However, if you wanted to find what the total length would have been. How would you work that out? Well, the total length is just the uh, natural length, which is 2, plus the extension. So the total length of the thing would be 4.67 metres. But the key thing here is t equals lambda x over l, 
which is actually just Hulk's law. Alright. Right. Next bit. So going to the question here, we've got an elastic spring of natural length 1.5 meters has one end attached to a fixed point A. To a fixed point. Uh, so we've got a horizontal force of magnitude 6 newtons is applied to the other end and compresses the string to a length of 1 meter. Find the modulus elasticity of the spring. Okay. So uh, this actually is pretty pretty much a short question uh, it compresses and it's a horizontal force all right of six newtons so we know that l is going to be 1.5 that's the natural length and the extension is going to be 1.5 minus 1 which is not 0.5 that's where people get mixed up on these we draw our diagram down and uh, we've got the nice I can't draw a spring, I'm sorry, but you know what I mean. There's my tension going that way. There's my six force being pulled the other way. So my tension is going to be equal to six. We know that lambda x divided by L has got to be equal to six. Hmm. That's coffee there. Uh, so we know that 0.5 lambda divided by 1.5 it's got to be up to 6 so the modulus elasticity of lambda there is going to be what 18 yeah, 18 newtons all right not a dreadful question to get us going here but you know just use the formula we go along with it right so we're going to look at each of these and i'm not going to essentially write out the full answers here. This is just like a bit of theory, if you will. So we've got string of natural length L and modulus of elasticity is 123. is stretched to a length of 2L. What's the tension in the string going to be? Well, it's actually going to be the same as the modulus of elasticity. It's going to be 123. Uh, because lambda is the force needed to double the length of the string from what we had before. Uh, natural string... A string of natural length uh, L and modulus elasticity under 23 is stretched to a length of 3L. The tension in this case is going to be 246. The difference between these is because the extension is proportional to the tension, so double extension is going to be double the tension. Um, so we've got next one here a string of natural length L and modulus elasticity under 23 newtons are extended by a distance of 2L. Uh, what is the tension in the string? Uh, well, essentially, this question and this question are exactly the same. The only trick with these is that we've reworded it. It says, well, 3L minus L is an extension of 2L. So that's all I've done, reworded it. Uh, we've got a string of natural length 3 metres extension to, uh, is stretched to a length of 6 metres by applying a force to one end of 99 newtons. What is the modulus elasticity of the spring? Uh, so, well, we've doubled the length. Uh, so in doubling the length, it's going to be 99 newtons again, because we've doubled the length. That's the whole reason. We've got a string of natural length L and lambda's 40 newtons is compressed to a length of 3 quarters L. What is the compressive force? Okay, well, the compressive force is going to be uh, just 40 divided by 4, i.e. 10 newtons. So it's being compressed by one quarter L, so the compressive force is a quarter of lambda, which is just a quarter of 40, which is 10. We've got a string of natural lengths L and lambda is 40 newtons, is compressed by a force of 30. What's the extension going to be? Well, we don't know what the extension is going to be because the string's going to collapse under compression, so you can't really tell here this is some of the trick one. Uh, so the, the real thing here is you cannot tell because strings uh, collapse. On the compression. Okay. It's really hard to write on a screen. Apologies. Right, so. Now what we're going to do is combine a string and a spring together. So we're going to make these a bit more complicated now, aren't we? So, we've got uh, the elastic springs, P, and, P, Q, and Q, R are joined together at Q to form one long spring. 
the spring PQ has a natural length of 1.6 meters, and modulus elasticity 20 newtons. The string, uh, spring QR has natural length 1.4 meters, and modulus elasticity 28 newtons. Uh, the ends P and R uh, of the long string are attached to two fixed points, which are four meters apart on the same horizontal plane. Assume Q is at rest and in equilibrium. Find the tension in the combined spring. So, the way I like to work these out is A with a quick diagram to get us going. So we've got the... That's one. And then I'm going to change the colour. Hopefully you can see that yellow. So, let's change to black. We've got T1, T2. Two different tensions. The tensions are going to be equal to each other. We know the length of the full thing is 4. Um, we know this bit here, the natural length is going to be 1.4. Uh, what we want here is to find what the extension is. This is 1 minus x. That's going to be x. That bit there is going to be 1.6. So PQ, what do we know about PQ? Well, we know that L is going to be 1.6. We know that lambda is going to be equal to 20. And we know that the extension, or the X, if you will, is going to be X. For QR, we know that L is going to be 1.4. Uh, we know that lambda is 28. And we know that X essentially is going to be 1 minus X. And because we know the tensions are equal to each other, what we can do is just set up a set of simple set equations. So 20x divided by uh, 1.6 has got to be equal to um, 28. What's the 1 minus x divided by 1.4? Alright, so 28x then is going to be uh, 44.8. What's the 1 minus x? Um, so let's probably just expand that bracket out, 44.8 minus 44.8x. At this point you could just stick it in your calculator. After the work through it here, so we're going to get x is uh, 8 over 13, which is on my calculator 0 0.62 metres, which is two significant figures. Um, that's the extension, so we want what the tension is going to be which is going to be 20 multiplied by 8 over 13, divided by 1.6, which is going to be 1. Uh, go to 7.69 newtons to 3 significant figures. Okay. Not a nice question, but there we go. They're never going to be always nice on a, an Excel. So, we've got two identical elastic springs, P, Q, and Q, R. Each have natural length L and modulus elasticity 2 mg. Uh, the springs are joined together at Q. Their, their other ends, P and R, uh, are attached to fixed points, with P being 4L vertically above R. Uh, that's also a key bit to remember there. A particle of mass M is attached at Q and hangs at rest in equilibrium. Find the distance of the particle below P. Okay. So... A uh, quick diagram just to get us going here. Uh, so we got a spring. It's not a terrible spring to draw, actually. We've got the particle. And we've got this thing going down here to R. So that's going to be R. That's going to be P. Uh, we know what lambda is going to be. Lambda is 2mg. Uh, we want this thing here, don't we? Which is going to be 4L. Um. And then we just need to put on the old stuff that we know. So we've got L, we've got the extension to be X. We've got that thing there, which is going to be 12 minus X. And we've got this thing here that's going to be L. Uh, so we've got the tension in one of them is going to be the tension in the other plus the weight of the thing, which is going to be MG. That's just resolving. So the tension in one is going to be 2MG x over l is 2mg, or well they're going to cancel quite nearly, 2l minus x over l plus the weight mg. So we can cancel the m's and the g's which is quite nice. So we've got 2x, it's got to be 2 lots of 2l minus x 
plus uh, L. I'm going to turn it through by L at the same time, because essentially this is going to be coming 1 when I cancel each other out. Um, so we've got that, which is going to be 4x. It's going to be what's that going to be? 5L. So x is going to be 5L divided by 4. The distance below P is going to be 5 quarters L plus L, which is going to be 9L over 4. And that's the answer to this problem. Okay, so now we've got a little exam question for you to have a go at. Um, so I'll let you go through it, and then I'll have a quick go at it. So I would suggest pausing it, have a go, and then we'll have a look. So, uh, okay, so this is going to work in the same principles. Uh, we've got the weight of the thing here is 5G. We've got the tensions within the two strings, T1 and T2, I should hope. Um, so we can use that T1 is lambda x over L, so T1 is just going to be 175, if you read the question, uh, times by uh, what have we been given here? Pass plans on equilibrium, yeah. Uh, right, so it's going to be, what's that going to be? 120 minus 100, it's going to be 0 0.2 meters because we've got it in centimeters, being careful, divided by uh, 1. Oh well, that's quite nice. Um, so what we need to do is do T1 plus T2 has got to be equal to the weight, which is just going to be 5G. So we've got 175 times 0 0.2 divided by 1 plus what we want times by 0 0.3. Divided by 0 0.9, because that's what we're told here. Uh, it's equal to 49. That's going to give you into Ugh, sort of that. Um, so, lambda is going to be... Now, on your calculator, you've got a solve function, which I'm just going to plug in as 1. Uh, so, you have 175 uh, times 0 0.2 uh, plus... Now, on your calculator, you use the x button times 0 0.3. Um, divided by 0.9 is equal to 49. And if you press shift solve on the Casio class with, and you stick 0 in, so it's using a, a numerical method, and when it solves it, it just tells you the answer in about a second is 42. So the correct answer is 42. So if you want to avoid going through all the algebra and solving it, then you're allowed to do that, and you get full marks for it. All right? Uh, did I put the mark scheme on here? Yeah, I did. So that's what the mark scheme gives you. That's where your marks are coming from. Uh, so you're getting your two marks for setting up the equations with your t's in there. Uh, you're getting one mark just for deducing that it's going to be the 0 0.2 that you want in the top bit. And uh, getting the final answer is final two marks for lambda as being 42. Um, so yeah. So that's the first bit of this. The second bit of this is when we include... Uh, things in Elon Mechanics now from Elon Mars, and we start bringing those in a bit more. Um, I will warn you, this stuff is not going to be straightforward. Um, so what I'm going to do is actually going to split this up into two videos. So this is the first bit that you're going to watch right now, that you've just seen, and then I'm going to put the second bit together, which has this stuff, and it gets more and more complicated because I don't want to overload you straight away. Okay, thank you very much for watching. And I'll be back right with you with the next bit.